you might not be actually programming their heart. Right. And the heart is where we're going to get that inner transformation, where we're cultivating it to be able to receive the seeds that we're planting of Christ so that they develop a relationship with God on their own. And so- Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good late night, (laughs) whatever time of day you're listening to this podcast, welcome to the Biblically Center Podcast. Yes, thank you. We're happy to be here. My name is Johnny Jordan, and you are my wife, Danica Jordan. Yes. This is, which episode? Episode 11. Ooh, pretty snazzy. Let's see, today we're talking about... um, we're talking about our virtue, J. Yes, J. Yeah, which J is what our last name starts with and what my first name starts with. Wow. Which is pretty cool. So this is a pretty meaningful episode for us. <laughs> is it you've taken it to heart? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to do our mission statement first before we get into J? Yes, I would love to. Biblically centered equips your family. Oh, you're doing this. <laughs> I'm doing it on the fly. Okay, let's just make maintain eye contact the whole time. Do it again. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Biblically centered equips your family with knowledge and conversations to live and defend your Christian faith. Nice. Good job. Thank you. So, yes, like we said, we are uh, in Virtue J. We have a curriculum that centers around 26 virtues that you can teach to your kids from the time they can understand English to the time they exit your home. Yes. Um. So, you know, for some of you, that's about, you know, 15, 16 years. For some of you, it might be a little longer. 15 or 16? When are kids leaving? Oh, like the comprehension. Okay. I was like, like, wow. If they're starting with their kids when they're two or three. Gotcha. And then they're leaving when they're 18. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Yeah. That threw me off. I was like, our children are not leaving at 15 or 16. (laughs) We're doing this old school. It's like you homeschool your kids and then you send them out in the world when they're 15. Tell them to figure it out. Uh, Oh. Yeah, you gave me a heart attack. <laughs> but we have a virtue curriculum that centers around these 26 virtues, um, which is fantastic. So today we're scratching the surface on J. Do you want to tell us what J is? J, yes. And this is a part of our third category, which is about exemplifying Christ. So the um, other virtues, A through I, have been in two other categories. So we're starting a new category today. So it is Virtue J, we joyfully radiate hope because we've experienced God's grace. Mm, I like that. Yeah. We've got a few definitions here. So because we do love definitions at Biblically Centered. We do. Because what is a word outside of its definition? Right. And meaningless are, fluff. That's true. And there's a lot of meaningless fluff yes. out there. <laughs> so we're going to define a few of these. Um, let's do a little back and forth. I'll start with the first one. Okay. okay. Love that. So I'm going to define joy. So joy is defined as the expectation of good, assured approaching possession of a good. Nice. Hope is confidence in a future event, the highest degree of well-founded expectation of good as a hope founded on God's gracious promises. The hope of the church is the Messiah, and it is also a belief grounded on substantial evidence. And lastly, we have grace, which is favor, goodwill, kindness, the free, unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from him, the application of Christ's righteousness to the sinner, a state of reconciliation to God. Yes. So a lot of, I feel like it's appropriate for this time of year to Mm -hmm. be talking about this one. Absolutely. Because I feel like one in three songs talks about joy, hope, or... Peace. It's not really grace, but peace. Yeah. And yeah. Nice. Yeah. I actually really love um, Christmas music, especially like the more theologically side of Christian music. Yes. Um, it stirs up a lot of emotion in me for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's like kind of like a weird mixture of like the nostalgia of all the childhood memories of Christmas mixed mm-hmm. with just kind of the whole obviously story of Christmas. So it mm-hmm. kind of has... The emotion is kind of pulling from the nostalgia, but then also the consistent truth of Christ's birth and everything. So, you know, it's just, I do love Christmas. 
Yes, and we play our Christmas music a lot. Yes, we do. Right now. And thankfully, our kids like it. Every time we yes. turn on music or get in the car or something, especially our daughter always asks to play Daddy's Christmas playlist. Because I made a Christmas... I'll do a little plug for it right now. Do it. Might as well. I made a um, Christmas playlist. Two of them, actually. One is called Flat White Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one is called Christmas Morning. So, obviously, the one we listen to right now is Flat White Christmas. So, it's <laughs> over three hours of Christmas music that I have carefully selected they're all songs that i actually like i actually went through a couple days ago because we've been listening to the playlist obviously for weeks now and there's a few songs that i usually will skip over i was like i'm just gonna take those out so i refined it a little bit more this past week um but if you go a few more fun ones, i did add a few more fun ones added some in sync in there yes um but if you go spotify uh and search flat white christmas it's the one by johnny jet plane because that's my uh handle on spotify (laughs) so we listen to that so that one has a wide variety it has a lot of classic christmas songs a lot of new christmas songs there's instrumentals there is this band i like a lot called august burns red that's a metal band and they have a christmas album that is doesn't have any vocals so there's no screaming or anything like that it's just the christmas music and there's plenty of people who aren't really big fans of metal who i yes. convinced to listen to this album and end up, i had a friend text me a few days ago mm-hmm. um who he's not like a big metal head or anything but he was like i had no idea how much i needed this album <laughs> in my life so it's great and it really i just love it uh and then I- cr- and still on the queue is the christmas album that i grew up listening right that i need I you need to get some of those songs yes yeah please CC and BB Winans. They I think need you to say be BB on. and CC Winans, right? BB and CC? Not so. CC and BB? I think everyone says BB and CC. I guess B comes before because C. Because it's A A B B C C. Anyways, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Mm-hmm. Classic. Um, you need to get, yeah. Yeah. You need to get on And there. then there's Christmas Morning, um, which we play on Christmas Morning. And that's, that's a more consolidated list. And it's more so in the lines of just more like the classic Christmas yes. songs. It kind of takes away the newer stuff. Um, and that just is a callback to my childhood because just growing up in my, um, or going to my grandparents' house for Christmas, just every Christmas morning, they, their house was cool. I mean, it was an old school house. So, well, I say it was an old school house. There's, uh, they didn't have like all the modern tech we have now because this was obviously like the nineties and early two thousands. Right. But anyways, they had a record player, a CD player and a tape deck in their living room. And then they had speakers that ran all through the house so you could play music from there and they would go through the house so they would always you know turn on a record or a cd of you know just these old old classic christmas songs Mm -hmm. and that's just what would kind of be in the background of the house during christmas day all the time so i just liked it so anyways um love christmas music apologize for those who maybe don't i know that there are some people even christians even christians and that's a surprise but even (laughs) christians who don't particularly enjoy christmas music but I maybe think, maybe you will find some new options that you like from the playlist. I think so. I yeah. think it's a very nice playlist. It, it is. And it is intended to hit shuffle. Yes. So don't just start it from the beginning or else right. you're going to get like, an, you know, 30 minutes of Frank Sinatra back to back. <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't build it to be played like. Right. Like a CD playlist. It's right. like just hit shuffle and then. Yes. Let it do its thing. Uh, but that also, our next episode is going to be a bonus Christmas episode. Our Christmas special. Yes. Which I'm very excited for. Yeah. We're still working out some details on it, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. It'll be a lighthearted episode, just yeah. something to hopefully, you know, usher in the Christmas week Love and it. have some laughs along the way, some hot chocolate and candy canes and ho ho ho's and <laughs> <laughs> I am making hot chocolate this week for our life group. She does this awesome crock pot chocolate, crock pot hot chocolate. Yes. That's really good. It's really good. So, all right. When I drink it, I imagine it's what the hot chocolate tastes like. In, in Santa, Santa Claus? Claus. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, it didn't take you over a thousand years to Steak make the recipe. It's shaken, not stirred. Yeah. But ours is. I don't really shake it. I it is do stirred. stir it. Yeah. I guess you could shake but it. But the flavor profile is what I imagine. Yes. I just need one of those really cool mugs yeah. that he gets. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Moving on. Yes. So Virtue J. So um, hope always gives pleasure or joy. While wishing and desire may be accompanied by pain and anxiety. So just um, when we're teaching this virtue, we really are trying to define what does hope mean in a sense that honestly, Christianity is the only, I would say is the only true fulfillment of hope. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't think that anyone, 
they might be hoping for something, but it's probably more of a wish or a dream. Right. Whereas we have full confidence and hope in Christ who has already fulfilled what needs to be right. fulfilled. So, And it's not necessarily something that we have to get into on this episode, but at the end of the hope definition, it says it's a belief grounded on substantial evidence. Correct. And, um, and we're believers, um, obviously, but... Um, specifically that there is substantial evidence that points to the validity of yes. Christ and the resurrection. Right. It's not just something that we're um, wishing is true. Right. It's something that we believe there is substantial evidence mm-hmm. that states it's true. And so, that, so to tie that with hope, oh, it's the confidence of a future event. Right. Whereas a wish is like, you know, more so like it'd be awesome if this happened, but really who knows? Right. Whereas hope is like, no, we have the hope. Right. Of this, because we have evidence and, and faith that we believe that this is true. Correct. And our faith, yeah, going to the word faith, we have faith that what we do believe is the truth. Mm-hmm. And maybe, I don't know if we t- talked a ton about it in our uh, Virtue D, which was all about the Bible and prayer. And we talked about like the. Um, uh, the pr- fulfilled prophecies. Maybe next time around when we talk about D, we'll talk more about like authority of the Bible and how we believe that it is substantially that it there is substantial evidence to prove that it is true mm-hmm. and valid. Um, so yeah, our 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 Christianity, our faith is not just rooted in a wish or a hope like this will be awesome and this really has happened and it will. Um, no, we believe that. Yes, the things in the Bible have happened and those things promised will come to fruition. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah, I like that distinction. So, um, Hebrews twelve two says, Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Um, which is just, I think around this time, I mean, obviously Easter is more about um, the death and resurrection of Christ, but... Still, he was born into this world for that purpose. So, you know, he took joy in that, even though it was really hard for him. But he took joy in knowing that he got to fulfill what needed to be fulfilled. Yeah. I th- and I, you know, I feel like that verse is a very, um, for as simple of a sentence it is, it's very short, but there's so much complexity into what, how does, like, how do we apply that to us? And like, what does that mean that the joy was set before him. So he was able to endure Mm -hmm. the cross, which we know is ultimate torture, ultimate pain. Um, and, and he did that willingly Mm -hmm. because there was joy on the other side of it. And it wasn't like he was, I mean, obviously he was in pain and we know that he, you know, he cries out to God and, you know, basically says if there's any other way, but it wasn't like he was, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to compare it to like <laughs> the minor things we, we go through modern day, at least in our Western culture. I know there's a lot of people around the world all, you know, going through different types of tragic events, but, um, generally speaking, you know, what we endure here in North America is relatively mild compared to historically what most civilizations have endured and then globally what people are enduring. So we have it pretty good. And yet we still have joy set before us. Mm -hmm. So for us, the responsibility that we are carrying right now is raising our children. And so the joy that is set before us is um, the hope and the faith that they are, that they'll be raised in our home and given the um, resources to accomplish what God has put on their lives. So, but all I all that to say is for us as parents, that's partly the joy that is set before us in terms of raising our kids. And so we should be able to endure the challenges that come with that because there is joy on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we have three kids, seven and under right now and one on the way. I don't know if you can, the table's cutting off her tummy, (laughs) but we got one on the way due in about three months. Actually, basically exactly three months. Yeah. And there can be a lot of stress, um, you know, feeling like you're having the same conversations every day about listening and picking up and, you know, being, you know, doing work with a happy heart, these kind of conversations. But for me, this verse is a challenge because it's like, I mean, Jesus was able to um, 
willingly endure the cross because he knew what was on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's ultimate pain. But yet sometimes I feel like we almost don't want to endure what we're going through, even though it's minor in comparison. Well, I think, um, I mean, this is not to the full extent of what you're talking about, but you know, how many people your whole day, you're just like, Oh my goodness. And, uh, and then you get in your bed and you're scrolling through pictures of your children, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, okay, all day it was a fight for you to even be able to like yeah. interact or be happy with them, which, you know, some people do have those days. I do have those days. But if you can think about maybe that moment in the night where you're looking at those sweet moments and trying to remember those throughout the day, um, that will be of benefit, mm-hmm. I think. Well, and it's like, what was that statistic? And this is uh, close to probably what the true statistic is, but I don't know what the exact number is. But something around the sound like by the time your kids are 12, statistically, you've already spent 80% of the time you're going to spend with them for the rest of their life. Something like that. Yeah. Because obviously when they become teenagers, a lot more activities, a lot more things to do with friends, yeah. um, you know, different things that they're involved in. And then obviously they're progressing to graduation and moving out. And then you'll see them, you know, of course, every situation is different, but that's what they're just saying, statistically speaking. Right. By the time they're 12, you've basically already spent 80% of the time you're going to get with them for the rest of their life or the rest of your life. Um, so I'm just planning on living very close to all of our children. <laughs> <laughs> Hope they have the same plan. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you, ha- you have 12 years. I mean, just to, for conversation's sake, to boil it down, you have 12 years of dedicated quality time yeah. where your kids are in your home and they think you're cool. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and, and, and then that's it. And then they're, and then they're progressing on to develop a life for themselves. And Um, how many of those days do you wish away or you wish away the morning or just like, ah, and then it's like, oh man, like that was today, you know? mm -hmm. So I think just that can remind us, I mean, it goes back to, or I guess it speaks to a lot of our future virtues, but just being thankful, you know, for the time that we do have and spend your time well. Um, one of our virtues does speak about that and nurturing relationships. I mean, all these things work together to make sure that you are developing in yourself and in your children the desire to want to be around one another, but then to also just be really thankful for those. And yeah. it does get hard. We have a very ornery three-year-old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yesterday I called Johnny I w- uh, in between running some errands and Mickey wanted to talk to me, our youngest, and just his little voice just broke my heart Mm -hmm. he just talked so sweet so yes the joy of your children set that before you and you know sometimes they're going to be cranky but yeah ultimately god has blessed you with them and he's blessed you as their parent Mm -hmm. so and i would say too just try to i don't think we're saying anything revolutionary here but just uh you know i know for me personally the times that i feel like i get most quote-unquote maybe annoyed or irritated when I'm getting interrupted by the kids as if I'm in the middle of doing something on my phone or, you know, already like, and a lot of the times if I'm doing something on my phone, it's probably not the most important thing. Right. There is an element because, you know, we have social media accounts for biblically centered. So some of my time is on there trying to figure out ways to, you know, grow your influence on social media, which is kind of like a double edged sword because it's like you kind of love it and you hate it at the same time. (laughs) But you can still, even even though I'm on there for the purpose of biblically centered, you can still find yourself getting lost in the in the reels and the stories and the and just the other random stuff that pops up and you know something you had no clue that you would be interested in watching and the next thing you know you're watching this and the kid comes and interrupts you while you're watching this random video and you're just kind of like, for me it's like you kind of have to make a mental check of like if you're not using your phone for something productive in that moment, just go ahead and maybe set it down or set it off to the side yeah. and I, just that that helps me out be with the kids and be more present again like i said that's not a revolution revolutionary thought i think anyone would understand yeah. that concept but well a lot of the time when your children maybe you do find them getting more annoying i know for me it's like when i'm trying to do something maybe not selfishly but like i'm centered around myself in that moment and it's like ah, i was trying to do this yeah. you know and it's like Okay, but in the grand scheme of things, was that actually super important? Probably not. 
I mean, sometimes cleaning and yet, you know, like there are some things, but most of the time it can wait. Yeah. So, um, all right. I'm going to keep moving on. Okay. Um, Joel three sixteen it says the Lord will be the hope of his people. All right. And then we got a old Testament verse, um, in Deuteronomy 28, 47 through 48. Um, it says, because you did not serve the Lord, your God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Because of the abundance of all things, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and lacking everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on. That's why you did that to me, isn't it? No, I didn't know that word was in there. (laughs) I can't say that word. You say it. Say that word. Iron. Iron. And he will put a yoke of iron on your (laughs) on your neck. Until he has destroyed you. <laughs> I don't know why I just can't say that word. I hate it when I'm like trying to tell people, like, you know, like iron sharpens iron. or And I just can't say it right. Never can. I don't know why. Anyways. It's okay. All right. So, you know, you can talk about this first too. But sure. I feel like obviously there's an, there's an element of this that is very obvious that the heart matters. Right. Um, it's not just task that we do um because you can do all the right things but if your heart is in the wrong place then it's for not right that's that is the thing that god cares about yeah it says out of the you know out of your heart flows or out of from your mouth flows what's in your heart right and so out of the abundance of your heart your mouth speaks yes there you go (laughs) it was there um but i mean we see this in our kids Um, not often, but there will be sometimes that, you know, you ask them to do something, then they'll stomp to do it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, nope, come back. Like, that's not actually how we're going to do that. We're, we need to have a good attitude. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just speaks to, again, we've already talked about this in another virtue, but how it's about their heart, not just the behaviors, Right. right? Because if you program them to do the behaviors you want, you might not be actually programming their heart and the heart is where we're going to get that inner transformation where we're cultivating it to be able to receive the seeds that we're planting of Christ so that they develop a relationship with God on their own. And so even though that's harder and it does take a little bit more mindfulness, it will pay off in the long run. And Mm -hmm. I think just getting them to know, you know, um, we do everything as unto the Lord. You know, it's not just for us or for one another, even though that's good to recognize, Mm -hmm. like I'm doing this for someone else and serving them. But ultimately it's for the Lord. Like God gave you your family. And so you're doing it to your family, but to the Lord, because he provided your family to you. And so, um, yeah, we just want to instill joyfulness into them even though sometimes they probably won't (laughs) show it right away Mm -hmm. and that's like right now our kids we're trying to I don't know about y'all and your kids and laundry our kids we're trying to instill like you could wear a shirt two days in a row because we're just at home and it's the winter and so like they did laundry the other day you wore jeans inside for three hours they're fine you can wear them again so especially our middle child, I think last time we did laundry, he was just like, why is my pile so giant? And it was like, because you've never put anything back in your drawers. So we never know. Actually, this time it was reversed because we did laundry or I did laundry with him yesterday. Yeah. And Annalise stack was oh, yeah. the tall one. And Everest, he was like, I was like, Everest, come do your laundry. He was like, <laughs> and I was like, come look at it. And he looked at it. He was like, that's it. And I was like, that's it. That's what we got today. Yeah. As I was dumping Annalise in, I was like, I think she hasn't double worn any of these things like especially jammies i'm like we can get a good two to three nights in jammies Mm -hmm. um some people probably think that's gross though because your body does a lot of weird things while you're sleeping in terms of okay sorry they're big t-shirts they're fine i hate that word excretions ew you know there's another word i hate lactating Anyways, but a lot of times, and I know with our son, last time when I was helping with laundry, he was just like so frustrated and so upset. And, you know, you kind of have to flip those moments and you're like, you are so blessed to have all of these clothes. Like Mm -hmm. you could literally have three outfits and you would have to do laundry twice a week so that you could have something. But you have enough to wear clothes like 
a good week, week mm-hmm. and a half, and you're fine. And you still have more clothes in your drawer. Mm-hmm. Um, so just trying to flip that. I know sometimes that's hard in our Western civilization to grasp that we are blessed with so much. Mm-hmm. Like it c- sometimes makes me like sick how much that we really are blessed just because I don't know. That's just yeah. a perspective that I like a lot. And again, I understand that there are these concepts out there. Like I sometimes I don't like, I guess some of these terms can be more idealized and discrediting things that people are actually going through. And I don't want to discredit that, but sometimes perspective helps because like, especially for those of us listening or, you know, in, in the Western culture, North American kind of way of living, um, like there's a statistic out there that globally, if you were to, if you were to boil down the globe into 100 people, mm-hmm. and if you have a car, yep. if you have electricity, electricity, running water, running water, like a fridge to keep <coughs> your food cold, a fridge to keep your food cold, internet, and internet, you are like one of the 100 people. Yeah. Uh, so so if you listening to this have those five things that I just listed. You are in the top 1%. You know, there are these things that we think are number to other people or this or that. And really, we'll get into the, uh, like, stewardship and our later virtues. But, like, we have been blessed with so much. And I think it can be really hard to see the person who's, like, one step ahead of you or two Mm -hmm. steps ahead and to compare yourself. But in the reality and speaking, if we have hope in Christ like that's that's all we need yeah you know and I again I, it's hard but and it's um, easier and I, I get that it's easier said than done right yes because yeah but like Johnny and I have been to Africa um, Kenya and then I've been to Uganda a few times my dad actually goes there at least once to twice a year um, shout to out to do his org- organization bunch of Bunch a of b- bunch of ragamuffins. It's either dot com or dot org. I don't know. Bunch of ragamuffins. Yes, I'll probably his get the non- actual pro- address. Yes, and please put do. It here. Um, but he goes over to repair water wells, and so that's been really cool to like share those videos and pictures with our children and those stories because I think it's really hard to kind of comprehend that, um, and even still, it's hard for them to comprehend. It that. is hard to comprehend. I mean, going going there and seeing it for yourself is um, is one thing. Yeah, you know, to not. Well, s- for me, I was going to relate it to the joy that they have. Right. But yeah. Like we would be in church, and it's like these are the most joyful people you've e- ever been around. And if you were in their position, you would think like, I live like that. Like, how can I even be joyful? And they're just joyful because. Their ultimate hope is in Christ, uh-huh. you know? And so I think, I don't know, if you're able to go on a mission trip somewhere like that, it would be phenomenal, A, for you, B, for your family. That's Johnny and I have talked about, like, what age will we be able to take our oldest, you know, and kind of start forming those things when they're younger, because I didn't go until I was, like, 17, I think, was my first trip, and it was very eye-opening, And I even think, you know, 12, 13, that would have been, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to find somewhere safe, but, um, that would have been really good for me, I think around that age. Cause that's when I think kids start developing that, like, it's me, it's me, it's me. And you're like, no. (laughs) Yeah. And it is, it is eye opening. And just again, to see how thankful they are for the things that they do have, even though we would consider it to be a little, like, I remember one of the stories of, um, I think his name was Sam. Probably. Maybe he was the one who liked playing music on guitar oh. and one of the people on the trip brought him a guitar cause they knew mm-hmm. about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so as like a gift, they brought him a, a nice, you know, professionally mm-hmm. made guitar from America. Yeah. And, and I just remember like them giving it to him and him just being kind of overwhelmed and then watching him take it, go around to the back of the church that we are next to and then taking it out of the case and raising it to the heavens and thanking God for it, you know, yeah. for like five minutes and it's just like that. Like he was truly thankful for yeah. this. 
And it's like, how much? Well, and he knew where to direct his thankfulness. Like, yeah. he did direct it to that gentleman. But for his first step to be like, I'm going to take this to the altar mm-hmm. to praise God was like, wow. He ultimately knows yeah. where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, how much stuff do we have in our homes and our apartments and our lofts and our, you know, whatevers and that we just take for granted. Like we just have so much stuff and truthfully, we're not thankful for most of it. Right. It to that, to that level. Cause we're used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, but again, on the other side of that, it's like, I know that God gives us the ability to make wealth and we're not speaking against that. It's more so just the perspective shift of realizing that no matter where you are now, like you have enough. Right. And yes, it is okay to work hard and to pursue the things that God has put on your heart that might create more, Mm -hmm. but like be entrusted with, I mean, God has entrusted you with what you have now. Yeah. So do that well so that when there is the opportunity for more, God can trust you with that. Well, and I would also like to speak back to this virtue. We have been entrusted with much so that we can show that hope to other people in what they're going through. And I think Christmas time is a really great way for that. I know some people do like the Operation Blessing boxes or, you know, giving to a nurse home or choosing a um, child to sponsor or something. Those are great ways. A thankfulness Mm -hmm. to show that you are thankful be to think about you know everything you are blessed with and you're providing that for someone else but ultimately you're providing them hope around this season which can be really depressing and really hard if they don't have hope or family or christ you know they they don't it can be a really hard season Mm -hmm. and so that would be a great way for your family to um to show your thankfulness, to show that you can be a blessing, to use your abundance well, um, and then yet a point to the hope of of Christ. Yeah. yeah. So um, it says we are to take joy in obedience of God's word. Joy is evidence of receiving our salvation. Um, and as much as I think some people would say like, Oh, no, I have to obey. Like there is joyfulness in obeying and joyfulness in receiving instruction mm-hmm. and doing it well. So, um, well, it's kind of like the difference between conviction and guilt too. like, mm-hmm. there are convictions that come along with our faith, but, um, ultimately the conviction should lead to, um, to the appropriate change associated with that conviction. And like, like there is a certain level of, excitement or um gosh i'm trying to think like if you're in church and the pastor says something that you're like shoot i've been missing the mark on that (laughs) or if you're reading in scripture you're like oh okay well i've been taking the wrong approach with that (laughs) um like there's a certain like level of like okay like this is an opportunity as opposed to like oh dang it you know Mm -hmm. like we want we want it to be as you because, I mean, we've, Danica and I have been Christians for a long time, and there's still, you know, obviously the, the times where it's like, oh, snap, or we're really missing the mark here. Mm-hmm. Um, but the hope is that once we, that is a realization, is that as we take the steps to correct that, for mm-hmm. lack of better terms, it's like there's a joy that's associated with that yeah. because we're, we're taking joy in the obedience right. as opposed to doing it begrudgingly or just out of like, you know, I guess I just have to. Well, and because our rela- because it's a relationship with God. And so I think if you think about just your person to person relationships, like what if you find out someone's favorite snack is this? And that's like, then you get to be joyful if you ever have an opportunity to like bless them in that if they're having a rough day or some, you know, like you can see it from that or mm-hmm. you can see it as like a, oh, man, I have to change all the, and it's like, no, like that. Like you're saying, it's a it's a joy to serve God, and it's a joy to continue the work of transformation um, and sanctification, um, and also that gets you closer to Him. Because you were saying guilt, guilt is a lot of like I'm going to be in myself and lonely. You know, like it can isolate you, and that's not what we want. We want joy to bring us closer to Him. 
um, through those things that, yeah, might be really tough to change, but there's a joy in knowing that we are getting closer and closer to pursuing holiness, Mm -hmm. which calls us back to our first virtue. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I will wrap us up on one more verse. Let's do it. Okay. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And I think that's just a great verse that covers yeah. everything we talked about. Um, he is the God of hope and he is the one that fills us with all joy and all peace, uh, particularly special around this time of year, I feel like. And um, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will abound in hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just love, I just love all of those things. It's like, I don't know. It's so, it's such a dichotomy from what the world I think experiences and like we get to experience hope. We get to experience joy. We get to experience peace and those all come from God. Mm -hmm. So just, and I think it's great. It's also a good reminder for us, um, that it's important because we can have these conversations on this podcast and with ourselves and with our family and, and understand the concepts intellectually, you know, but mm-hmm. the important thing is that you allow it to get into your heart yeah. because you want these behaviors to become an overflow of truthfully what's in your heart, as opposed to just it being in your head of always like, I just need to modify my behavior. Like that's not really what we're seeking. I know we've right. said that before, but that's not behavior modification is not ultimately what we're what we're seeking. We're right. seeking it being a byproduct of a, the actual things going on in our mm-hmm. hearts. So, um, like we want not the knowledge of the joy in front of us to be the reason we parent the way we do. We want right. truthfully the joy of what's before us, like actually, yeah, that in our hearts to be. And so, um, I think you know that's just a, a good distinction, yeah. and. You know, and again, like I said, I don't want any of these conversation topics that we talk about to discredit anything that anyone listening to this has gone through. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I saw even even those of us in the privileged North America, like we all still have yeah. real struggles and things that we go through. Um, so I don't I want to make sure I, that, you know, I'm not discrediting those things. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just excited about this category. <laughs> <clears throat> again, Virgie J falls into how Vir- we... I think you said Virgue. Virgue? Virgue. <laughs> Virgue. Uh, Virtue J um, is the beginning of our virtues that exemplify Christ. Um, and I think all throughout the New Testament, you could find that God, or Christ, when he came to earth, offered everyone hope. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the woman at the well, our kids recently did that in their class, and just the hope that she had... And then her joy that overflowed yeah. to everyone. So um, just one of the many stories. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Stepping into the Christmas season. So we're excited again. Next episode is going to be a fun one. So don't skip it. It's not going to be, you know, on on our virtue topics, but it's just going to be a fun, lighthearted episode. Should celebra- I still celebrating find Christmas. definitions, though? We, I'm sure we'll find something <laughs> to define. Um, but if you're looking for a little gift... We got biblically centered merch.com. We do. We got gifties on there. You can get some fun ones. Yep. There's some shirts for adults and kids. Yep. There's tote bags. There's yep. cell phone cases. Yep. There's a poster on there you can get. There is. Um, hoodies. Hey. So, uh, and there's going to be more coming on that. But, yes. get, you know, it's Christmas season. So if you want some gifties um, of something that you're not going to get at Target, then um, <laughs> that would be awesome. Correct. All um, right. That's all for now. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you guys for listening. And we uh, look forward to seeing you next time.